Good morning, and welcome to our online worship uh, here at MyChronoLife.com. We're glad that you're tuning in today, uh, and hope that we can grab some uh, comfort and some peace and confidence and, and some joy uh, from God's Word today. Uh, we're going to take just a brief pause from our current sermon series. We uh, have been working through our Ten Commandments uh, sermon series, uh, but today we're just going to stop and, and focus on a different section of God's Word. Uh, given the current circumstances in our country and our world, uh, I think it's important for us to, to try to uh, redirect our attention uh, to the joy that, that we can find in Jesus. Uh, so that being said, uh, I'd ask you uh, to please turn uh, your Bibles to Matthew chapter 14. Uh, we're going to read a familiar account, a story of Jesus performing a miracle where he, he walks on water and then um, he also invites Peter uh, to come out and walk on the water. Uh, so go ahead and, and try to pull out your Bibles if you have them with you. Uh, otherwise, you can try to download the YouVersion Bible app, maybe on another device, and uh, follow along with us in Matthew chapter 14. Uh, but before we get that, I guess I just want to speak to uh, the sudden change uh, that has happened in all of our lives over the last week. Uh, it kind of reminds me of uh, growing up in southern Arizona, uh, much like southern California. Uh, Arizona only has a few months out of the year where we really get all our rain. Uh, and in Arizona, it's usually the months of July, August, and, and parts of September where these things called the monsoons, they, they show up. And I guess some of us may be familiar with them, but especially in Tucson, it was like a you know, yearly occurrence during those months. And here's what would happen is it would be 110 degrees outside, uh, sun shining, and then out of nowhere almost with, with almost no warning, these ginormous storm clouds uh, would just come rolling into the valley and just dump buckets and buckets of rain. Uh, and it was just kind of life-altering. Uh, it, it changed a lot of things. P businesses, uh, for that brief period, would kind of just be at a standstill. Uh, traffic was horrendous. Uh, you had some, some people who thought they were better uh, than the weather and felt like they could go through these, these streets when the, they were flooded, and, and that just turned into a mess. But it, it was just so sudden. It was crazy. Uh, and, and it was life-altering. And I think, uh, in many ways, what we're dealing with right now kind of parallels that, that uh, it's been very very sudden. Uh, everything has come on, and uh, throughout all of that, there's been kind of one of two reactions. Uh, people have kind of let their heart be filled with fear, right? Uh, and maybe some of us are, are sitting here today, and, and we're feeling a little bit of fear, right? We're, we're fear about uh, the, the job security. Um, so many businesses are shutting down. Many of us right now are, are not uh, working, and, and who knows when the phone call is going to come that says that we're laid off. Some of us already are laid off, and I wonder for how long. So there's this fear of, of financial well-being, of job security. Uh, for some of us, it's a, it's a fear maybe of health, uh, that uh, we know this is a serious thing, uh, and we don't like to get sick, and so um, we're just fearful uh, of all of a sudden having a high fever or having a cough or, or maybe just having the sniffles is enough to, to make us fear, fear uh, about our health. I, I know there's some people I talked to in the last couple of days that are, are genuinely scared. Uh, for their family and friends who are maybe high risk uh, for the coronavirus, who if they get this, it's, it's going to be almost maybe immediate hospitalization. Uh, and so we're fearful for that. Some people are just fearful of what tomorrow is going to bring. Right? The last week has been full of, of changes that come, and, and the situation has been so fluid uh, that we're fearful of, of the uncertain future. And some of us maybe aren't experiencing any fear. Maybe we're kind of cynical in our thinking. Maybe we're kind of looking at this uh, as a storm of sensationalism, of people blowing things out of proportion, uh, of it just not being uh, so much a big deal as much as, as just uh, the media creating a frenzy. And no matter where you come down on it, right, if it's a cynical thinking or if it's, it's of a fear, uh, the reality is it's, it's come on and it's sudden. And in the midst of this storm, of, of this coronavirus, of all the changes, what I want to look at from Matthew chapter 14 is this, is kind of be, our, I guess you could say our theme, uh, is that you and I, you know, we cannot choose when these storms come into our lives. We couldn't choose when this coronavirus is going to happen. But in the midst of this storm, what we can do is we can choose where to look during it. And what I mean by that is, again, there are people that are, are looking to all different sources and all different things to grab comfort. 
And there are people who are looking at all different things that are, are ultimately not bringing any comfort, but perhaps bringing more fear or, or more cynical thinking. And so today we're going to see from this account uh, in Matthew chapter 14 uh, that our direction and our focus in the midst of this storm, it needs to be on our Savior. <laughs> because in Him we're going to see that, that we have assurance and comfort of His presence in him we see that we have the certainty that, that his promises are real. And that's going to bring joy. Uh, that's going to bring comfort. That's going to bring confidence in the midst of the craziness that is this storm. Now, I'm not going to promise, nor is God promising, that this storm is going to pass anytime soon. And it may be several weeks or months before we get any sort of normalcy back into our lives. But one thing that is constant, one thing that is sure, that is certain, is as we look to Jesus, we're going to have joy in our hearts. We're going to have a sense of calmness amidst the storm. So I invite you, please now, let's look at Matthew chapter 14. We're just going to kind of go through this uh, almost verse by verse. Um, so Matthew chapter 14, I'm going to start reading at verse 22. And, and just to let you know, I'll give you a little context. Jesus uh, had just performed this amazing miracle where he fed 5,000 people with just a few loaves and a few fish. And understanding that, we pick up at verse 22. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side of the lake, that's the Sea of Galilee, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to what? To pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat, which the disciples were in, was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus, he went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Now, if you clicked on the link and you found the note sheet, if you are taking notes, here's one really important part that we can grasp from the verses we just read. And that's this. When you find yourself in the midst of a storm, keep your focus on Jesus. And first of all, remember that Jesus is always near. You know what amazes me about these words is the fact that the people who are fearful in this text, the, the ones who are, are scared for their lives, who are terrified, the Bible says, are Jesus' disciples. Huh, doesn't that just make you stop, right? And think about their situation. These disciples, right, they had been with Jesus for months, if not years. They had seen so many miracles. In fact, that very day, they saw him feed 5,000 people with just a few loaves and a few fish. You'd think they would know better, right? you think they wouldn't have to be fearful because they knew that, that Jesus, right, this is a guy who's performed all these miracles, that he is the very Son of God. But yet they're overcome. They're out there, and John says that they've been, they've been rowing and trying to deal with this storm and this wind until 4 o'clock in the morning. They've been out there for hours. And out of nowhere, they see someone walking towards them. They think it's a ghost. They're terrified. They're deathly afraid. And so they scream out. And that's what in God, our Savior, right? Well, he gives them these words of encouragement. He says, take courage, right? Don't be afraid. Why? Because it's me. Those words hold power. They're reminiscent of the times when maybe you and I as little children found ourselves restless in sleep, maybe because of a bad dream or of our own fears, and, and then all of a sudden, right, to know and to have mom or dad there, and for them to say, don't worry, I'm here. Or maybe it's that time when we found ourselves waking up in a hospital bed, unsure of how we got there, and not knowing what the future holds, and to have our loved one, maybe it's our spouse or our parents say to us, don't worry, I'm here. This is what Jesus does in the midst of the storm for his disciples 
in the midst of the storm for you and me, He reminds us that He is always near. And it helps us all the more to understand that the person that's here with us, that it's not a ghost to, to torment us or to bring fear into our hearts. It's not an unknown person who doesn't understand us. It's, it's Jesus. It's our Savior. It's the one who went to the cross to take care of our sins. It's the one who promises that He will never forsake us. It's the one who promises that He will work everything out for our good. Yes, the one that is here in the midst of the storm, the one that is with each and every one of us, is the one who created the universe, who knows us better than we know ourselves. Jesus is always near. And so now he's with us when we're in that hospital bed. He's with us as we're maybe confined to our shelters and our living rooms. He's with us as our kids are outside playing. He's with us when our kids go back to school and when we go back to work. He's he's with us every step that we take in this life. And all the more now, he is with us in the midst of this storm. Are we beginning to understand and see the calmness, the comfort, and the peace that God gives to us in knowing that he's always here? A pastor, right? Some of us may say, I know that, right? I understand, and I, and I believe what Scripture says, but that necessarily, that head knowledge of knowing that Jesus is here, it's, it's not hitting me here yet. If you find yourself in those terms and in that place, I'd encourage you to also remember this, that in the midst of the storm, we look to Jesus, we remember that he's always near, but what we also see from this text, a second thing. And that's this, that, that Jesus' word is always sure. Let me continue reading. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come on the water. Come, Jesus said. And then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind and the wave, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And and when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. And then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Now, there's this miracle that we almost kind of would expect, right? That, That Jesus, the very Son of God... Of course, he's going to be walking on the water. But now a second and a third miracle appears. The second one being this, that that Peter, right, a human being like any one of us, he calls out to Jesus and says, Lord, if it is you, then let me walk out on the water with you. And so he does. Peter steps out of the boat and walks on water. Now, here's... The important thing to understand this is that there was nothing about Peter that that made him special, okay, that enabled him to walk on the water. But in confidence, he listened what? To the words of Jesus when Jesus said, come. Now here's the lesson that God is giving to you and to me in this section is this. That there was nothing about Peter nor his faith that enabled him to walk. There was no power behind Peter or the faith that he had, but rather the power for this miracle to happen, it came from the very words of God. Another way to say it is this, right? That Jesus' word contains power, and because it has power, because the word of God has power, it's something that we can look at and say it is sure, and it is certain. It is something that we can put our hope and our trust in. Well, then all of a sudden we see Peter begin to sink, and we ask the section, why would Peter do that? Well, Matthew tells us it's because as Peter begins to walk, what does he do? He he takes his, his vision and his focus off of Jesus, and he begins to look at what the wind is doing. The waves that it's creating, uh, the rain, and all the destruction that this wind and these waves are causing. Peter looks at that, and all of a sudden his heart begins to sink in fear, and therefore his feet begin to sink in the water. 
Is there a lesson for you and I in this? That maybe sometimes we tend to look and to see what everyone else is saying, what everyone else is doing, and rather on the sure and certain word that God gives to us in the pages of, Christ, of Scripture. That we don't so much focus on God's promise that He will never leave us nor forsake us, but rather tend to believe um, perhaps maybe some of the false things that are out there on social media or, or, or what our neighbor is telling us. God says to you and to me, remember that Jesus is always here. But also look to the promises of his word to find strength. That's hard though. Especially at a time like this. Because sometimes for you and I as Christians, we look at the amount of cases that are going and deaths that are happening in our country due to this virus and those numbers seem a lot more real than the God who says, I will work everything out for your good. Sometimes we look and we feel and understand the symptoms of our body as we become sick. And we think that the hospital bed and the diagnosis are all the more real than the promises that God says that he will let no evil be harm us. It can be difficult. At times like this, to know and to see and understand the promises of God's word. But just because other things so, seem so real to us doesn't necessarily mean in any way that God's word is not real or active or powerful. Because it is. If you don't believe me, I encourage you to look throughout all the pages of Scripture and see countless examples of men, of women, of, of prophets, of kings, of people who looked to the word of God and there found solace and comfort and confidence. You know, in the midst of this, we can remember that Jesus is always near, and we can remember that Jesus' word is always sure, but there's another thing that God invites us and tells us to do. And that's to make sure that we are doing all that we can to feed our faith through his word. Because as we do that, as we feed our faith in God's word, the fear that we have in our hearts, the fear that we see displayed in our lives begins to starve and ultimately dies. There is one example in scripture, one person, one individual, one situation that so much mirrors what you and I perhaps as a country and a world are experiencing right now. It's a prophet by the name of Jeremiah. You see, Jeremiah lived at a time when the kingdom of Judah was not experiencing the great things. They, they were being overcome and being besieged by another nation. In fact, the inhabitants of Jerusalem were on lockdown. They could not go outside of their city gates because this army was hell-bent on destroying them. Does that sound at all like maybe what we're experiencing? And see, in the midst of that, Jeremiah is overcome. Uh, he writes down in Lamentations chapter 3 the distress that he's experiencing, not just physically, but emotionally. His faith, by every stretch of the imagination, is absolutely puny. He, he's blaming God for the situation. He's expecting and saying things like this, that, that God is not hearing to him, that God has, has shut him out, that God has walled him off. For Jeremiah, things were looking not so great, and he was... Fearful, to say the least. But then this is what happened. Very much in the same way that Peter took his eyes off the waves and back on Jesus, Jeremiah redirected his focus not to the current situation of what was going on in his life and the life of the people around him. But Jeremiah redirected his focus on his God. Let me read to you just a section from Lamentations chapter 3. I'd encourage you to look at it and read it in full later on, on your own. In the midst of all of his suffering and all of his fear, verse 21, Lamentations chapter 3, this is what Jeremiah says. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassion never fails. 
They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, God. I say to myself, the Lord, He is my portion, and therefore I will wait on Him. The Lord is good to those who hope in Him. His hope is in Him. To the one who seeks Him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. You see, just verses earlier, Jeremiah is overcome with fear. He's blaming God. He's frustrated. His faith is puny. And then he begins to feed his faith. He recalls to mind five things. The, the Lord's compassion, which never fails. That his mercies are, are new each and every day. That his faithfulness is always there. It's great. And because of that, God is his portion, the thing that sustains him. And therefore, with confidence, Jeremiah can wait for God to relieve and to undo the storm that has come into his life. Dear Christians, feed your faith and your fears will starve. Recall to mind the many times and examples where God has demonstrated in your life the fact that He is with you. The fact that His promises in Scripture are sure and certain that you can rely on and feed your faith on these truths. That God is compassionate. That His love and His mercies are new every morning. That He is the one who sustains us in life and in death. Make the most of every opportunity you have to use this time to let your light shine and to feed your faith. The storm is going to be here. And for how long, only God knows. But what you and I know as Christians is this certainty. That our focus needs to be on our God. That we must remember He is always with us. That we must remember that His word and His promises are sure and certain. And with that confidence, we must remember as God enables us and helps us to feed our faith so that our fears will starve. Amen. Let us pray. Great physician of body and soul, we come to you seeking the help that only you can give. Lord, we ask that you spare people in our country and around the globe from any harm and danger to body and soul. In these uncertain times, renew our spirits with the certainty of your word and the promises that you give to us. Lord, we ask that you give wisdom and discernment to our national, state, and local leaders. Give them an extra measure of courage and a spirit of kindness toward our people. Lord, be with doctors, nurses, first responders, and all those who are involved in the medical field. Give all of them strength as they continue to battle on the front lines of this virus. Lord, we ask that you also give to the people of this world and our communities a sense of cooperation and love for one another. Enable families to make the most of this time and to recenter their lives and their minds on each other, and especially on you. Help all of us to establish in this time good habits, habits of reading your word, of praying, and most of all, displaying confidence that you are with us, and that nothing can separate us from your love. Above all, Lord, give us joy and peace in knowing that you roll over everything for the good of those who love you. Lord, even in this, we know you are working for the good of your people. And so that with that, we confidently say, Amen.